Testament is in Greek. So the Hebrew word kavod for glory is not the New Testament word for glory. For the New Testament is in Greek. The Greek word is doxa. Doxa. Glory. Doxa basically refers to the recognition belonging to a person. Glory. The honor and renown. It is the opposite of shame. It is the will of God for us to live in a, in a manner where the Lord can bring doxa to our life and not shame to our life. You want this, young ladies, young, young men. I keep talking to the young folk. Maybe, maybe it's a forerunner. I don't know what John's going to preach Friday night, but I know this. He's a preacher, and he's armed with a word. And parents, get your kids out. I do know this. I do know this. Part of the game, part of the game is... The part of the strategy has to be that we got to get our youth to know certain truths earlier and earlier because the devil is trying to tell them, sell them certain lies at an earlier and earlier age. My, my. The devil wants to put thoughts in their minds, things that they're not even ready for. We got to beat the devil to the punch and, 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 and fill their little hearts and minds with God's truth. And every time you talk to them, talk to them about God's truth. Talk to my grandbabies. Among the questions I ask them is, have you prayed today? Have you talked to the Lord today? Have you told the Lord that you love him? Oh, yeah, I want to know. Do you know the Lord loves you? Do you know who God is? Do you love Jesus? I want to hear, I want to, I want to hear the answer. I, I ask and I listen. I want to know. Well, they're, they're just children. That's why I'm telling them. That's why we're telling them. What do you prefer that we do? We wait till the world and the progressives and the left fill them with an acceptance of perversion, fill them with de demons, devils, Harry Potter, witchcraft, and all that stuff before we put in them the precious truth of God. Amen. It's called giving your children a foundation, giving them a compass. Yes, we've got to do it. Everybody say doxa. doxa. I'm going to preach in just a minute. If you, if you, you say amen, I, I'll speed it up. Doxa is the splendor or brilliance that catches the eye. Notice John said we beheld his glory. The Lord wants to bless you where people can see you. One of the promises that God gave us in paying tithe, he says, all nations shall call you blessed. That means he will bless you where people can look at you and see that you are blessed. They can look on you. They can see it in your eyes. They can hear it in your conversation. They can see it in your attitude. They can see it in your chariot. They can see it in where you live. They can see it in how you dress. They can see the glory of God on you. In America, people pay attention to winners. I think I'm too frank for some of you. People don't listen to losers. People buy product from people uh, uh, if the product is working for them. A fat person can't sell you weight loss products. Amen. And a skinny person can't sell you muscle gaining products. When I go to buy shoes, I pay attention to the salesman's feet. That determines my answer when he says, can I help you? I'm not looking at what's on the, on the wall. I'm looking at his feet because depending upon how he treats his shoes, that tells me whether or not he can help me 
in my purchase. You don't hear me. Oh my, there is a glory. Somebody ought to say amen. And, and, and ask God to put it on you. There is a glory that the Lord has for the believer. There is something that he wants to put on you where people can look at you. Amen. Doxa is, it embraces excellence. It embraces perfection. It embraces, listen to this, the divine nature. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Praise the Lord. I think it's getting warm again. If Romans, I'm trying, to say, I'm trying to be considerate. I feel like I'm learning that if it feels good to me, it's hot to you. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead, by the doxa of the Father. Even so we also should walk in the newness of life. The same doxa that raised Jesus from the dead is to be displayed in our lives as we walk as Christians in the newness of life. We have a ways to go, don't we? Amen. Because we want the world to see Jesus in us. I'm tired of the church being overlooked. I'm tired of the church only being singled out for its moral failures. I'm tired of people pointing at us when, they, when they're talking about our inconsistencies. When we serve the true and living God, we need to let the world see that there is a reality in serving the Lord. That, that, that there's a realness. Everybody's not faking. I don't like church because the church is filled with hypocrites. There are some hypocrites, but everybody's not a hypocrite. Don't tell that lie. You'll never convince me of that. There are some people who are in and out and up and down, but that's not everybody. There are people whom God have laid his hands on. Old and young, rich and poor, praise the Lord. People who have the doxa, who have the kavod of God in their lives. And people see the glory. People see that you're different. And the next thing you know, they're, they're, they're willing to listen to you. And when they're willing to listen, the Bible said we're to be ready at all times to give a reason to every man who asks us for the reason of the hope that, uh, that is in us. We should be prepared to say, I am like I am. I believe like I believe. I walk like I walk because on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross. What you see in me is from Jesus. What you see in me is the results of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But if we whine like the world whines, if we complain like the world complains, if we're moody like the world is moody, if we're up and down like they're up and down, then there is no doxa. There is no glory. If the police got to come to our house to break us up, as the sanctified husband wails on his sanctified wife, there's no doxa. See, we are obligated to walk in the newness of life. There's nothing, nothing witnesses to the world. Nothing makes us more evangelical as walking in the newness of life. When they come to a saint's home, they ought to be able to tell the moment they walk in, saved people live here. Sanctified people live here. Hallelujah. When they get in a saint's car, they ought to be able to tell, I'm riding with the saint. Get in a sanctified man's car and the ashtray, ashtray full of cigarette butts. They know you're not living holy. We're to walk in the newness of life. Can I preach? So whether we're talking about the kavod or the doxa, this is the blessing that God has for every believer to walk in. Now let me make my point and let me get ready to go home. Now back to David's noteworthy accomplishment. It was noteworthy. Coach Mebbin for David to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord back to Jerusalem. 
It was awesome that he returned it to its rightful place, taking six steps. Then he would worship and sacrifice and continue. It was timely for David to do it. The glory was restored to the most holy place. Wasn't that good? That glory, however, there's a but there. As awesome as it was, the glory was kept behind a veil. And only one man could go behind a veil once a year to be in the presence of that glory. God had a better plan for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for his glory. But, but I want access to it. God, it was God's, brother, listen to me, it was the Lord's uh, desire to cut out the middle man. See, the high priest was the middle man. He went into the, uh, into the uh, Holy of Holies on behalf of the people. But God had something better. Before I talk about the better that the Lord had for us, let's talk for a moment about the veil or the curtain that separated the most holy place from the tabernacle, later on from the temple and the rest of the sanctuary. This was no small curtain. It took 300 men to lift it. It's a mighty curtain, especially when it got wet. It was huge. Praise the Lord. It was 60 feet long and 30 feet wide. So we're not talking about some little curtain that you would imagine in your house. We're talking about a huge curtain. And the curtain, praise the Lord, was so big brag. It was so thick that if you put a yoke of oxen on one end of that veil and another yoke of oxen on the other, those four beasts of burden one pulling east and the other pulling west, could not split the veil. They didn't have enough power to pull the veil apart. So we're talking about a massive veil. Good God Almighty. Ah, and it was hung in the temple. And as I told, tell you that the temple had three parts. The courts, hallelujah, the holy place where only the priest could enter, and then the most holy place where only the high priest could go once a year. Read Leviticus 16 and you'll see what I'm saying. This huge curtain separated the holy place from the most holy place. And not only that, but this curtain separated, uh, this veil was a barrier between the glory of God, the kavar, the doxa, and uh, humanity. Thank you, Jesus. And it was the will of God to have the glory available to all. Hallelujah. God had a better deal. The Hebrew writer writes about this deal that God had for us. If you turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews and we take a look at the ninth chapter, praise the Lord, we'll see something. That will bless us real good. The Hebrew writer said this, uh, verse 1, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly, a natural sanctuary. And there was a tabernacle. I talked I talk to you about that. The tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick and the table. And the showbread, praise the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. That's the first, that's in the holy uh, of where the priest could gather. After that, the second veil, the tabernacle, uh, which is called the holiest of all. That's where the priest hung out at. Not the priest, only the high priest could go there once a year, which had the golden censer. And here it is, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot, 
that had manna and Aaron rod that budded and the Ten Commandments. These things were in the Ark of the Covenant. Are you with me? And over it were the cherubims of glory shattering the mercy seat on which we cannot now speak in particular. Particularly. Now, look at this. These things were thus ordained. The priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone. Is that not what I've been telling you? Once every year. And, and, and he went in not without blood, which he, which he offered for himself uh, and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost thus signifying, here's the significance, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. See, even when the priest went in there, that was the Holy Ghost way of saying, I got something better for you. But don't nobody know yet what that better is. Somebody shout better. While as the first tabernacle yet was yet standing, which was a figure. It wasn't a complete thing. It was a figure. It was a type for the time, a uh, type for the time then present in which we offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscious. In other words, when they went in and they offered the blood of bulls and goats, the blood of bulls and goats could not sanctify from the inside out. It could not cleanse the conscience of the priest. It could not cleanse the conscience of the people. It could get their sins forgiven, but their conscience was still dirty. How many know that God will touch you from the inside out and change your heart and change your mind? Can I get a witness? Oh, I'm not getting many amens today. Which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ. Here's the turn. But Christ. Being come a high priest. Jesus was both the high priest and the sacrifice. Christ being come, when Christ came, he was a high priest of good things to come. Somebody shout, good things. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. He was talking about the temple. He said, what God has for you is greater than this physical holy of holies. It's greater than this physical building. Can I get a witness? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once. Look at him. He's gone from being the priest now to the sacrifice. For the high priest went in with the blood of bulls and goats. But Jesus went in with his own blood. His own blood. Are you with me? With his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. See, the high priest had to do it once a year, every year. But when Jesus died, he died one time, once and for all. Good God Almighty, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the blood of bulls and, and, and of goats and, of, and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, says if these types symbolically sanctified to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the true and living God you see, if the blood of bulls and goats could symbolically do it, how much more shall the blood of Jesus clean us out, uh, clean us up from the inside out?
thank you, Jesus. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that we were under the first testament that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see, when Jesus died, Jesus' death not only paved the way for those of us who were yet to come, but it also took away the sins for those who had gone on before because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't do it. But when Jesus died, his death paved the way for us. Somebody say amen. I'm talking about this glory here. Let me read the Bible one more time, and then we're going to go home. But I see in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 22, having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest, see there, by the blood of Jesus. Now we can go in. The high priest couldn't go in but once a year. The people couldn't go in at all. But when Jesus died, it made the glory available to everybody. So it says now uh, we can enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. What is the veil? What is he talking about veil? The, the veil was the curtain. The physical veil, the curtain, praise the Lord, that was ripped in twain, praise the Lord, the curtain that was put up. Well, that curtain was a type for Jesus' body. Notice what it says, through us, through the veil, that is to say, his body, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. Look at this. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled uh, from an evil conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. When Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus died, the veil, hallelujah, was destroyed. That's why when we look at our text, we see the Lord at Golgotha. We see him hanging there. We see him crying out to the Father, Lama, Lama, Sabathana, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He cried and then he died. But when he died, it was an amazing thing. That mighty veil got ripped in half. What does that mean? What does it signify? It signifies to you and me that the glory of Jesus was released into the world. Well, what's the significance of that? It means that you can and I can. Praise the Lord. If we will, we can walk in the doxa. We can walk in the kavod. We can walk in the favor and in the glory of God. And in this day and time where the devil is trying to destroy us, I'm glad to be able to declare to the devil that there is a glory on my life that you can't penetrate. There is a glory on my life that will keep me through the storm and rain. How many know today that if you stand your ground, you can declare to the devil, Satan, you can't have me because I am an anointed vessel because the glory of God is on my life. I found out today that they are looking at us at the abortion clinic and they're trying to find ways to bring charges against us. But I'm here to say, do what you wanna. Good God Almighty, but there is a glory that's greater than your lawyer. There is a glory that is so great that when sickness comes, it has to flee. When the devil comes, he has to flee. When darkness comes, it has to flee. Because our God is still able to overcome the enemy. I wonder 
today. Good God Almighty, is there anybody here to rest and just hold your hands up and just let the doxa fill you up. Let the glory come all over you because that doxa will heal your body. That doxa will touch you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. The confound gives you power to cast out devils. The confound gives us power. Oh, oh, power to defeat the enemy. Somebody say it. Say it. Why don't you praise God? Because the glory is yours and yours and yours. If you believe it, praise him for his favor. Praise him for his anointing. Praise him because he made it available. Ah, yeah. somebody's hand and tell him it's yours walk in it it's yours claim it it's yours hallelujah this is no self-help this is not man's doctrine this is the Lord's teaching God said I'll glorify you the Bible says he glorifies the meek with salvation the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment thou shall condemn I challenge you right now to, to cast down the devil to condemn him tell him he's a liar tell him he's defeated tell him he can't win tell him you got power power over him Power to hear my mother-in-law. Power. Power to go where I can't go. Power. Oh, Lordy. Somebody help me. Crowd. Power. Experience this message in its entirety by calling toll-free 877-463-3477 to purchase your copy in CD or DVD format. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.